Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. This is the... You know, we're just going to talk a lot of college football. We're going to talk a whole lot of college football. We're going to talk next year odds. Gary just handed me some. Yeah. Some papers. Now, I, I do have three top or four topics that I want to hit before we get to those very quickly. Okay. Not, we ain't going to spend a long time on them. Okay. Uh, Wake Forest quarterback, grad transfer, Jamie Newman going to Georgia. Do you think that that changes anything with the Georgia offense? Do we know who Georgia's offensive coordinator is going to be? I don't think they're making a change. Then if no. they were going to make a change, I think it would have happened. Then, then no. I don't think it does either. I think they're like, going to run the same offense. I think this kid is good. I, yeah, I don't I know that he's, he's better than Fromm. I think Fromm's really good quarterback. I agree. And I just think they handcuff him. I, they I run think, such a bland-ass offense. I think Newman, like, your your problem was not protection. No. Your problem was the, the play calling. And You think Matt Luke is an upgrade or a downgrade to Sam as an I offensive think, uh, line coach? As an X's and O's guy, I think he's about even. As a recruiter, as a recruiter, I think he big is negative, a big negative yeah. too, right? Yeah, I, I I agree with the recruiter part. So X's and O's guys, he's a he's a good offensive line guy, but you're right. Uh, before we go further, winningcureseverything.com oh, yeah. dot com is the website. We got to pay the uh, bills. There you go. So go over to winningcureseverything dot com. Go check that stuff out. Uh, go check out the picks contest that is still rolling all the way through the Super Bowl weekend. Uh, you can win night stays over at some of the casinos in Tunica, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, et cetera, are over there, winningcureseverything.com. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. If you're watching on uh, – sorry, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure and hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button on this video. Tell your buddies about it. Make sure and leave some comments. Tell us what you think about these topics. We'd love to hear your opinions uh, along with ours. We've got our own. Obviously, that's why we're here. But we want to hear what you think as well. Uh, so we both don't believe that Jamie Newman will change anything with the offense unless they're willing to make a philosophical change. And if they ain't changing offense coordinators, I don't think that they are changing the philosophy. I don't think this means a whole lot. Well, here's the problem with being in the East and winning all those games that Georgia's won. You get confirmation bias that's wrong. Yeah. Well, well look, we, 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 went played, and two. we went to the playoffs, you know, two years in a row. And last year, we still won 12 games, went to the SEC title game. We win that. We're back in the playoffs a third year. What do we need to change for? And this is the problem is you win just enough because you're not facing great competition week in and week out that you believe shit that's just not true. Agreed. Uh, shit that is true. Tuninga, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. Still not in this. They, they got six. <laughs> I know, right? They I'm got sorry. six incredible sports books. No, it's, it's on me. I should have done it right off the bat. But Tunica, uh, they are incredible. They are the South's premier sports gambling destination. As I said, all their sports books are great. We can vouch for all of them. They got great shows coming to town all the time at all the different casinos down there. Uh, their golf courses are great. Their steakhouses are great. Uh, go check them out. Find more information on all of that over at tunicatravel.com. The second thing I wanted to hit on, Nick Rolovich to Washington State. He is leaving Hawaii. Um, so basically what we have here is a kid fake peed in an end zone. And now Hawaii needs a new head coach. I don't know that the kid fake peeing in the end zone has anything to do with state's change. No, it really – well, Because it, if the kid no, doesn't pee and state loses that game, yes, state's still firing Moorhead. I think had the kid not fake peed, I think Ole Miss wins the game. Yes. And I don't think that Ole Miss fires their coach, but I do Correct. think that State fires their coach Correct. back in November, and I think that Joe Judge takes the Mississippi State job Ooh. back then, and then Mike Leach does not leave Washington State. Not only you're, – okay, you're right on that. So, Hang on. I'm going to take this a little, little farther. The reason they got Leach, they did everything they could to get Leach, is because they entered into a dick measuring contest with, with Ole, Miss. Ole Miss, and you can't bring in – even a a good head coach that's an unknown name or a lesser name. No, it's a, you got to bring in the hype train. You got to bring the hype train in as well, and 
I'm not upset about it at all. No, no. It's, at the all. state of Mississippi football will be very entertaining. Watch the national championship time. game. Two guys, one of which is, is a buddy of mine, it's an Ole Miss guy, and he said, all right, you were really excited about the lane thing, but I know how you feel about Leach. Where does this put you in our rivalry? Because you've kind of been on our side of the fence for a while, and he's right. And my response was is there were two coaches in the country that Mississippi State could have went and hired that would have put me on their side of the fence firmly. One is Lester Miles, and the other is Michael Leach. Yep. And I said, that's it. That's that's the list. And I said, and, and they hired one, of and them. they did it. So yeah. I'm 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 over there now, bud. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nah, he was like, is. he was like, don't buy a cow. I was like, ah, I don't believe in the cowbell. No, we're not doing. I'll the never, cowbell. I'll never ring one of those. I, I vehemently disagree with it morally. Uh, if you want to pay us to ring one, we will absolutely ring one. So anybody that's out there, mm. you want us ringing a cowbell on I the show for you? I won't ring the cowbell. This man has a price. I'm just telling you. So if you want him to ring a cowbell. There was a day at a time where I was that broke. You you better bring the cheese. I have morals. I have morals now. Oh. I, used to, I didn't used to have morals when your, I was a younger your man. Your morals ain't that strong, my friend. We both know that there's a price for everybody. Uh, the third topic. Derek King announced during the national championship game that he is entering the transfer portal. Yeah. Saw that. Now, that has been speculated since – Week four of the college football season. Well, as soon as he said, "I I want a red shirt," he's it, once he said he's red shirting, and those other guys did. Everybody played it off like, "Oh, well, he and the best players." It, it was almost like Houston tanked the season. They want to learn the system and come back and next year be that much better. Yeah, but they started out one and three, and they said, "Nah, this ain't what we're here for. We want to win." And I want like, my last college football year to be this. Yeah, yeah, um, but. In doing that, Derek King did save a year of eligibility. That's right. And now Smart. he might Not have dumb. his pick of anywhere he wants to go. So he the 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 hype right now is LSU or Oklahoma. Um Well the hype the, two- the, the hype is LSU and I threw out Oklahoma when we were talking offline. Just because Lincoln Riley has a history of doing this, right? You're not the only person that's mentioned. Okay, that. I haven't heard anybody else talk about this, but like the, the LSU, a couple of weeks day. ago, a couple of weeks ago, I was moseying around the old interwebs, and I found like all these articles about how he's he's going to transfer to LSU. He's going to transfer to LSU. I was like, holy crap, that's amazing! It's amazing, and I got all hyped up about it. Then I got stopped for the day, and I slowed down. I actually read one of these articles. All the articles are from the same one guy. Who, who just has a bunch of different feeds that he pushes stuff to or whatever. And all it was was he started following Coach O and Emzinger and Joe Brady and LSU football on Twitter. Yeah. And this guy took that and wrote an article. And I'm thinking, and this was like championship weekend. Like this was the like the Big Ten title game, the LS, SEC title yeah. game, all this stuff. And I'm thinking there's a time that's going to come up in a couple of weeks when football is going to be over and you are going to score rap and claw with your fingernails to find some kind of bullshit to write about. You're going to make stuff up out of thin air just to give you something to write about. Today ain't that day. No. Why are you wasting a crap junk article on a day in which open your eyes, pick up the phone, pick up your, your computer or turn on your TV. And there's a hundred stories you can learn about that are interesting enough to write about. Yeah. I didn't get it. So I immediately got pissed off and out and all right, I don't care. I don't I don't I don't want anything to do. I'm not getting excited until I know anything new. And then last night, he saw that ass whooping at LSU was putting on Clemson and he said, uh, I'm gonna enter the transfer portal. Yeah. So I don't think that he is Joe Burrow. By uh, any stretch of the imagination. No, sir. But I do think that, that offensive coaching staff, if LSU were to get him, would be able to do things with him that he may not be able to get done at Houston. I'm worried very much about the offensive line. There's it, it's not outside the realm of possibility that all five leave. Well, no, you got uh, you got one that's a sophomore, right? No, Didn't they're all yeah, we did. They're all juniors or seniors. Dang. And the the couple of the jun I think they're three of them are juniors. And the three juniors are, and we're kind of playing this game because neither one of us really know how to evaluate offensive linemen like the NFL would. Yeah. I I don't know what kind of at NFL grade those guys would get. I know this right now, offensive line in the NFL is terrible, 
and I feel like every team needs three. Yeah, both uh, both of their tackles are juniors, and they're both uh, two-year lettermen. Um, their guards are both seniors, seniors. and their center, Senior. Cushenberry, is a junior. He is a junior. So, I there yeah. is there is a world in which all five are gone, and I don't know what this offense is going to look like after that. It doesn't matter who co- who quarterbacks it. Well, I'll tell you this. If uh, if all those guys are gone, uh, having Derek King would be beneficial uh, because he can get out of the pocket. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's so, way more mobile than is, uh, Miles Brennan, I believe. He is certainly that. Uh, LSU's also got uh, Thaddeus Moss, who is a junior. He um, has not announced if he's leaving yet, has he? None of them have. I wouldn't no. expect him to yet. Right now, it's it's super emotional right now. They've That's still, right. They still got till uh till next Monday. That kid doesn't need money, and his daddy keeps telling him, "Enjoy this, enjoy this, enjoy this." You never get these days back. I believe he's gonna come back. Uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is a junior. Now, um, if if I'm advising probably. anybody, if you're a running back in college, your miles are so your career is so short, man. Go take that money. I don't want to see him leave, but. Son, go get paid. I think I think you're going to be fine with uh, with Emory and Chris Curry back there. I think you'll be fine. Well, I, um, we're good enough to where they can lose a few place people pieces here or there. When you lose an entire unit that if, plays if lose, together as a unit, if y'all were to lose the entire offensive line and the tight end and Burrow, and you lose Justin Jefferson and Burrow and Edward Tillier, that could be a problem. Uh, uh, that could be a seven win football team next get, year. You do get Terrace Maybe. Marshall. And Jamar Chase back. No, it, I don't think LSU is ever in a position where they are going to to only win seven games again. Uh, it when's the last time that happened? Just saying, I mean, we've, it, it we've was, never lost an entire offensive line or the best quarterback in the world. At, even if you only return one offensive lineman, that's, that's still, still a problem. Not, that's still that's not still a problem. Good. I I still think there is so much oh. talent on this team, and the schedule sets up pretty well next year. I, I'm I'm really so, hoping that it. You know, I don't follow. Recruiting. I don't follow draft. Uh, not draft. I follow draft classes very closely. Um, but just like I couldn't tell you what the offensive linemen who are behind all these guys look like that are on the roster now, that are working out, that are practicing, that are being. I don't. I don't know anything about any of them. They might all be great. They could all be five stars and just stuck behind NFL dudes. Here is your schedule for next year. You got UT San Antonio. Oh, now we're scheduling already. <laughs> Texas, Rice. And then Ole Miss comes to Tiger Stadium. Then you got Nichols. So let's the Texas say we game, go three Texas and game one. is iffy. Like so, let's say no, let Ole Miss game could be iffy. And, and Nichols State is right after that. So let's say four and one to start. I don't think the Ole Miss game is iffy. Not yet. Okay. And Lane Lane doesn't have the guys in there yet. Okay. Um. So four and one there. Then you got at Florida, at Arkansas. We lose to State. Texas. I'm gonna. I'm never gonna hear the end of it. You know that, right? Oh, I know. At this, hey, it's in it's in Tiger Stadium though, and they're gonna make it a night game. So, um, well, I say that CBS has the rights. I don't know. We'll see. I hate CBS so much. At Florida, at Arkansas, Mississippi State. I think. Let's say let's say two and one there. Okay. Because like either Florida on the road or Mississippi State with Leach. We're not losing the state game. I don't think so either. I'm going to be in the build. But let let's say let's say at Florida because they never back. lost a game. Of, yeah, they did the first game I ever saw. After that, they never lost a game. I'm in the build. Let's let's say they lose to Florida. I don't have a ticket yet, by the way. I don't know when single game tickets go on sale. But July wants to throw me. July first. I can buy a single game. Single game, July first. Done. It's the same thing for every SEC team. Oh, good. I yeah. didn't know that. See, yeah, it's good to have um, them around. So, let's say through the first eight games, they're six and two. Then they've got Alabama in Tiger Stadium. They've got South Carolina in Tiger Stadium at Auburn at Texas A&M to end the year. They could absolutely be an eight-win team. You might. They could absolutely be a seven-win team. I told you they could go seven wins. You but might be right. Key, okay. But hang on. We're having an honest conversation right now. Let's do this now because we're already here. and you, you, We went in this can of worms that I wasn't expecting to go into. The key to happiness, the the formula for happiness is very simple. It's expectations minus reality, or reality minus expectations. Yeah, that's it. So if you go I, in expecting, I to go I fully understand losing Joe Burrow is worth three losses. 
Okay. Yeah. And you can't count the the three extra playoff games because we didn't. You're not guaranteed those. So if we go from twelve to nine, I'm not shocked. I'm not devastated. I'm not upset. Yeah. And if we underachieve that by one game, I'm still not upset. No, that makes sense. I really want to beat Alabama, and I really want to beat Texas. That makes sense. And I really want to beat Mississippi State because I'm going to be there. And I don't want to go watch them lose. Yeah, I can understand that, too. But that's kind of the list. I mean, after that, like, I kind of chalk everything up to this was a hell of a season, man. And I don't know that I'm just going to be upset if if next year we have to retool and reload and whatever. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm with you. We went a long way around talking about Derek King, Derek King transferring, <laughs> and somehow well, we got the, into so uh, so maybe he doesn't go to LSU. What's he? What he he could go to Wake Forest. Uh, that ain't happening. I I'm guarantee saying. you, that's not happening. Who needs a quarterback in the Big Ten? Michigan. Ooh. That's a horse you, of a different color. Do you think he – well, Gaddis is bringing in that – You think new, it's a horse – hey, whoa. Hold on now. Yeah, I mean, you got a, you got a valid point here. Okay. I perked up a little there. Um, Well, because they lose Shea. Now, they do have McCaffrey there, but McCaffrey didn't exactly show anything when he did get to play this year. So He's better than both those guys. Yeah, you're probably right. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the country, man. Yeah. Almost any school he goes to is getting an upgrade. Let me tell you where I would want him to go. Just if if not LSU, if not LSU, wh- where I think he can go and win a national championship next year. I think you push Kevin Mon- Kellen Mon out a window and stay in stay in Texas and go to A and M and just go right across the street. Yep. Because that I, team yeah. is loaded. Yeah, we'll get to them in the next segment in a minute. Um, but that team is stupid loaded. Yeah. They lose nobody. Well, we'll we'll get to Texas A&M next week because I don't have them on here right That's now. That's fine. But yeah, you're right. We're going to get to them uh, this well, week. Yeah, we'll talk to them on this. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're right, you're right. Um, Let's move on to this next one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read just a little bit. Did you see the thing about the lawsuit against Penn State? Yes, but you you read through it. All right. There's so, a lot of information. This is so I'm reading the uh, the TMZ sports one. Yeah. Uh, Penn State football accused of violence, sexual hazing. "Quote: I'm going to Sandusky you." Uh, it says a former Penn State football player is suing the university, claiming star players violently hazed younger players and made sexual threats, invoking noted child rapist Jerry Sandusky. The man behind the suit is Isaiah Humphreys, a defensive back who says he accepted a full scholarship to Penn State beginning in 2018. But Humphreys says life as a Nittany Lion was hell. Uh, with several upperclassmen players, including Damian Barber, Micah Parsons, Yeter Grossmatos, and Jesse Lucada, uh, leading a campaign of hazing against the new players. Uh, for your information, Michael Parsons is a star player. The outside linebacker was defensive MVP of the Cotton Bowl. Grossmatos was an all Big Ten defensive end in 2018 and 19. So th- these are not just nobodies. Uh, according to Humphrey's lawsuit, these are leaders on the team. Yeah, according to Humphrey's lawsuit, the upperclassmen intended to make the new guys quote their bitch from the get-go, telling them quote This is a prison. He claims the upperclassmen also made th- uh, threats against the new guys, saying things like I'm going to f you, I'm going to Sandusky you. This is Jerry. Uh, the alleged Sandusky quotes obviously refer to the disgraced Penn State football coach who was convicted of sexually assaulting many young boys at the school's athletic facility. The allegations get much worse from here. Here's a list from the lawsuit. This is exactly now, what they were doing. Yes. I, so those are things that they said they were going to do. Mm, saying words is is disgusting and vile, but it's not the end of the world. Right. This is what they actually did. Upper Allegedly. Upperclassmen wrestled lowerclassmen to the ground and placed their genitals on the face of the lowerclassmen. An upperclassman would hold down a lowerclassman and present his penis close to the face of the lowerclassman and stroke his genitalia, simulating the action of ejaculation. Humphreys claims an upperclassman would put his penis on the buttocks of the lowerclassman and stroke and again simulate masturbation, sometimes while the victim was naked in the locker room shower. And the last one, upperclassman would grab lowerclassman by the genitalia. That's some pretty hardcore stuff. There was a day and a time that this would have been seen as funny, Goofy, yeah. wrong, disgusting, and awful but, for the 
but yeah, for the we, guys that went through it. But it was not. It was very much looked at as boys being boys. Yeah, those days are so far gone. This wouldn't have been appropriate fifteen years ago, twenty years ago. No, not even close. When I'm talking about that, would have been seen as a coach seeing that and just it, waving that boys. off. Yeah, is we're talking the '60s and the '70s. Yeah, or even even. You know, late eighties. Yeah, 90s. maybe late eighties, early nineties. I was so young, it wouldn't. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't really know what anybody would have done. I know this. My entire time playing football, we we had like a small, minor hazing incident that was nothing close to as vile as any of this stuff. And I think the coaches almost killed those guys. Yeah. Uh, Humphreys claims he and his father reported the hazing to members of the Penn State coaching staff, including head coach James Franklin. But nothing was done by the team specifically. Is this a Franklin got to go situation? Does Franklin lose his job? Well, let's see. Uh, Humphrey says the Penn State University Office of Sexual Misconduct Prevention and Response launched its own investigation after receiving an anonymous complaint, ultimately found that Damian Barber violated school rules by hazing players. Barber was suspended for the first game of the 2019 season for, quote, a violation of team rules. The team never publicly, uh, publicly specified why Barber was suspended. Ultimately, Humphrey says he had enough and transferred out of Penn State to the University of California, where he now plays for the Golden Bears. Uh, there is more. Humphreys claims he was threatened by Jesse Lucada that if Humphreys ever visited his city, he would make certain he was, quote, gunned down upon arrival. Uh, Humphreys is suing Penn State, James Franklin, and Damian Barber for negligence and intentional infliction of emotional distress. He's also suing Barber individually for assault and battery. Uh, the latest update is from Penn State. They are now weighing in on the lawsuit, uh, claiming the university did its job thoroughly, investigating the allegations and taking appropriate action. The university has established processes in place for responding to claims of potential misconduct, a spokesman said. In accordance with our processes, uh, the Office of Sexual Misconduct Prevention and Response and the Office of Student Conduct carried out investigations of the plaintiff's claims independent from intercollegiate athletics. In addition, Penn State police investigated related allegations and forwarded the results of that investigation to the office of the center county is it center center uh whatever the county uh district attorney the da reviewed the case and decided that no charges would be pursued i don't think that it is a i don't think it's a franklin gotta go situation but it, it is it like obviously there's already crazy stuff because of the the rape stuff that went on at vanderbilt and the stuff that, for whatever reason, happens under Franklin's watch. It this is not a good look by any stretch of the. So these are allegations, but it does, and and it seems like Penn State has said they have. Here's the problem. Here's Penn State's biggest problem. They have vehemently came out with that statement that you got right there, saying we investigated this, and none of this is. They're basically saying this did not happen. Or the only thing that did happen was with the one kid, yeah. and he was suspended. This, this, he was suspended for a game. Yeah. You can't do stuff like this and suspend somebody for a game. Yeah. It's it, like and, the fact that he brought this lawsuit. This either the- has to be a lie. This kid is lying and making this up and going to lose this lawsuit. Or this is a got to go for everybody who touched that investigation. Yeah. Like that. that's what gets crazy about it. And it makes me wonder that maybe USC, maybe Florida State, maybe some of these bigger jobs. We thought open. his name was going to get kicked around. Well, and, and it did get kicked around, and nothing ever happened. But it got kicked around by the media. Well, I don't yeah, think any did. of those schools actually but called that, that's or actually saying. interviewed him. Right, it got kicked around by the media, but that was being pushed out by his agent. agent. I think he yeah. wanted these other jobs. He want, yeah. Oh, I wonder if he knew this was coming down. He's trying to get out. That's what I'm saying. And I think these But other the problem is, if one of those school, other schools found out about it and he was employed by them, he would be terminated with calls. He wouldn't get that buyout that they're going to give him. Well, agreed. But at what I'm saying, you don't want to bring in somebody that has this stuff hanging no, out. No, you absolutely don't. But I'm just saying, let's say it didn't get out. Let's say their investigation didn't find any of this, okay, when they were vetting this guy, all right? Okay. And they checked all their channels and whatever, and, and there, none of this stuff came up. And and you hire him. As soon as this comes down, if it's found out that this stuff happened under his watch, you're fired at USC. You're fired at Florida State. You're you're done. Well, and you get yeah, a bunch. Probably, and those schools are probably getting a lot of money back. By the way, yeah, you would you would say that, but his agent would would have 
things written in that contract because they would know. Like, it, it, this is going to be interesting to see how it plays out because this is some pretty interesting stuff. I mean, that's, this is serious. Yeah, that's pretty – if this stuff happened – yeah. Fuck those guys. Yeah. I'm with you. All right. Let's uh let's And it wrap doesn't up. matter if you're the leader of the team or if you're just a, a rah rah bench guy that, that polices the locker room yourself kind of guy and, and you know, a senior and, and that's just your job on the on the team. It doesn't matter. It's unacceptable. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh let's close out with this. The We'll start with the college football championship odds for the 2020 season. So the national championship. This is as early as you can get a line. The day after the national championship game. Uh, Clemson has the best odds, or the, I guess the worst odds, uh, at 2.25 to 1. So plus 225. Alabama is plus 350. Ohio State plus 450. Uh, LSU right now is plus 600. Now all of this is before the cutoff for the NFL draft. So we don't know who's leaving. That's right. Yeah. You don't know any of this for any of these teams. Yeah. Um, LSU is plus 600. Georgia is plus 800. So they are at number five. Number six is Florida at 14 to one. Auburn is at seven at 20 to one, which is absurd to me. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, Cause Auburn loses that whole defensive line. Like, Along with a ton of other players. Like, it's uh, either way. People love Bo Nix, man. It's crazy. Crazy. Um, number eight. We've got a tie for number eight. 25 to one. You've got Notre Dame, Oklahoma, and Texas. Uh, those are all big names. None of which I think has a shot at winning a national championship next year. After that, number nine, 33 to one. You've got Michigan, Oregon, and Penn State. Now, I don't think any of those have a shot. It basically. Nobody after Auburn. There's one team after Auburn that I think has a shot. And we'll get to that. But Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, I don't think any of them has all of the necessary pieces. Um, am I crazy for that? No. Like, 33 to 1, I still didn't think are long enough odds to, to nope. even make a play there. You haven't got to the team yet. Number 10. This is the team. This is the team. 40 to 1 is Texas A&M. You got A&M schedule pulled up? Uh, no. Sorry, I had another day. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Um, but it, the reason I would think about taking a flyer on this team is they they will have a lot of upperclassmen next year. And their schedule sets up insanely well. Um, the, I, I could take a flyer on this team, LSU, before this season. Was what forty to one? Yep. And now you've got A and M at forty to one, with a lot of upperclassmen coming back and a schedule to get easier. Abilene Christian, North Texas, Colorado. Colorado's at home, right? Yep. Okay. Arkansas, Mississippi State. That's at, a that's a, a home, State, that's right? first road game. All right. First road game. And you're already five weeks into the season. <laughs> Fresno State home. Yep. At Auburn. Okay. At could, South Carolina. Ole Miss, Vanderbilt. All right, so hold on. At that point, you get through it. Like, it they'll, be, not, they'll be favored every one of these games. So, 10-0. and 0. And then you close. At Alabama, home at LSU. Home against LSU. You got to beat Bama. You, you got to beat Bama, and you got to beat LSU. You got to beat LSU. They, I they think they're going to the be last time. I think they're going to be considerably better than LSU this year to start the season. I think you're probably right. Um, you get 40 to 1 odds on a team that's losing nobody and they don't have to win a game until November 21st. Now, that is a tough two game stretch though. Alabama and then And at, then they'll or, have to play the well, SEC at Alabama and title then LSU. Game. Uh and if they, they win those. And here's the thing, if they win those, what if they go one and one because it wasn't but the last 2 years that the champion was undefeated. That's true. So what if they just go one and one? And they still end up in the title game. I mean, and then they beat the Florida or Georgia. Or, God forbid, Tennessee gets good. Um, like, yeah. then they're in. Yeah, because you can lose a game in the SEC and still, right. make the, or still make the playoffs. So they could split this. If Alabama finishes with two losses and they finish with one, they're in. 
or if we have a weird year, they could get in as the four seed. That's right. So that's right. That's not. I mean, that's how Alabama got in two years ago. So no, this is this is the team that preseason I already mentally have them winning the West, winning the SEC, and in the playoffs. And you give me forty to one odds, and I think there's a good shot to do that. I'm yeah. taking it. I, I bet their playoff odds are like fifteen to one. Yeah, and I, I think that's a pretty good bet. Uh, after that, number eleven, you got Florida State and Wisconsin, which people must love this Norvell hire. Uh, that that Florida State team is not ready for for prime time. That's fifty to one odds for them. That that is a lower price Nebraska hire game last year. Yeah, I mean Nebraska was like fifth, third. Yeah, something like that. It was something insane. But this is this is just the excitement bump from a new hire. After that. I do like Wisconsin, by the way. Number 12 at Wisconsin, like, I think they'll find somebody to replace Jonathan Taylor. Um, but they also lose uh, Cephas, the wide receiver. Going to be tough. They, but, they, their, offense, their offense is what their offense is. Yeah, it's always, it's always the same. Yeah. And so if their schedule sets up right, then maybe. But that's tough. I mean, they got Notre Dame next year for sure. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know who else they play. Um, after that, number 12, you've got Oklahoma State, Tennessee, USC. Now, Oklahoma State's a little interesting here. It, these are all 66-1. Uh, to 1. USC, their schedule gets much easier than it was this year. Correct. Uh, and you do have two starting quarterbacks coming back. So, uh, And we'll talk about the Heisman odds here in just a second. But you got Slovis coming back, who basically started all year. That's right. And then JT Daniels comes back off of injury. Now, would it surprise me if he decided to transfer out? Not in the slightest. Like, I, I could totally see him going somewhere where he's going to get to play. Yeah. Um, but Slovis ran that offense almost to perfection this year. And they got a lot of upperclassmen coming back. I could see Clay Helton having a pretty good year. I do, too. And so no, I, I they, totally do. They do open with Alabama. Winning That's the national championship, I do not foresee at all. I think you're no. setting money on fire with any of these guys. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma State is getting back uh, Spencer Sanders, yes. Shuba Hubbard, and Tylen Wallace. That offense is going to be unbelievable next year. Yeah. We thought they were good this year. I, I that, think it depends on – I don't think they've announced who their new OC is uh, because they lost Sean Gleason to Rutgers. It's going to be um, Gundy's offense. It'll be Gundy's offense. I mean, yeah. G- Gundy's going to call plays and Gundy's going to run the offense. And and they are good for a season where they come out of nowhere every now and then, and yeah, they right. haven't done it in a little while. They're going to be a good bet to win the Big 12, though. Yeah, not the national championship. Yeah. Um, after that, number 13, you got a bunch of teams tied at 100-1. to Iowa State, Kentucky – Miami, Minnesota, Nebraska, Utah, Washington. Nebraska. Now, Kentucky being in here with the 13th best odds kind of blows my mind. Miami being in here kind of blows my mind. Kentucky might be the only one in there that's not in because of name only and actually has a the 13th best shot at it. Yeah. Because Would you like, agree with that? I, I think they are the best coach team out of uh, all of those. Maybe, well, okay, so Utah, I know, is really well coached. Minnesota, really well coached. Iowa State, really well coached. I think Kentucky's got more talent than all of, than those, all teams. of those teams. That's that's the difference. Uh, Washington with a new head coach. Um, and they the guy that they hired as their offensive coordinator, he was an assistant at Vanderbilt. He was an assistant at Penn State. And his offenses have been atrocious. I mean, awful. He's an assistant. I'm very at, curious like, maybe to see what Washington's coach. doing. Oh, this year. I, there is no telling. Um, and then after that, number 14, you've got Iowa at 150 to 1. And BYU. then you've got number 15, BYU, at 500 to 1. After that, nobody talk. else is on the board. Uh, Iowa at 151 or 150 to 1 surprised me. But when I think about all the guys that they lost last year and then all the guys that they will lose this year, they lose Nate Stanley, so they're going to be yeah. starting a brand new quarterback. They lose Epinesa, uh, so their defensive line is going to take a hit. It's going to be a little bit. Like, Iowa's still going to be really good. They're going to be well coached. This looks more like a 7-5 and five kind but of But they're year. rarely a national championship contender. No. Now, they, they did surprise us a, a few years ago when they went, you know, 13-0 and 0, or 12-0 and 0 leading up to the Big Ten title game. That's right. Uh, but then Michigan State got in, and I just – I don't see that for the playoff no. going forward. Now, let's talk about the Heisman Trophy. Uh, our, our best bet on that, by the way – Aside from Clemson, Alabama, you know, whatever, Ohio State would have to be Texas A&M, right? I think I think they're the best bet. Period. 
Yeah, I mean, you got the best shot at a payoff. They got the easiest schedule. They got the easiest schedule. They they realistically have to win one of two games. Yeah, and then beat everybody else you're favored to beat. Don't yeah. lose to a team you're not supposed to lose to. And then and then you're good. Uh, aside from that, let's see where's uh, where's our Heisman. I still don't like it. Trevor Lawrence is number one here um, at plus three fifty. Justin Fields right behind him at plus four hundred. Now history says you don't want any of these favorites. No, no, you definitely don't. Burrow was two hundred to one. He wasn't even on this list at this time last year. Right. So, I mean, we'll see. You you could really only get Burrow in Vegas, um, and that was only because you could go up and bet him, and they would make the odds there. They'd make them on the spot for you. Yeah, um, these are already set in stone. Third best odds. You've got a a slew of guys here: Chuba Hubbard, Keaton Slovis. Mac Jones, Sam Ellinger, Spencer Rattler, Tanner Morgan. Uh, Morgan is the Minnesota quarterback. Spencer Rattler is the Oklahoma quarterback. Ellinger, of course, at Texas. Mac Jones at Alabama. Slovis at USC. And then Hubbard is the running back. The running back. Uh, we don't even know if Slovis is going to start because JT Daniels could win that job back. Mac Jones at Alabama. We don't know that he's going to start. Correct. Because Bryce Young is coming in. He's the number one quarterback recruit in the country. Um, Sam Ellinger, of course, he's going to start. He's, he's a starting. He's the guy. Spencer Rattler, if Derek King ends up going there, like they they have brought in transfers, like you've said, all the time. So if Derek King were to go there, you he can might toss not him be out. the starting starting guy. Period. Tanner Morgan at Minnesota, he's the he's end. he's the guy. So for them, um, after that, fourth best odds, and these are sixteen to one. Kyle Trask at Florida, which. If you were going to have a Burrow type of thing show up. Dan Mullins, coach guy, has the full offseason under this system. Yeah. Uh, this year he got in because Felipe Franks got injured. That's right. Uh, he did not – he didn't really practice much with the ones before the season started. So if somebody were to get an entire offseason and, and really come out and surprise people, Kyle Trask would be the guy, I think. Yep. Uh Along with him at 16-1 to 1 is Miles Brennan, LSU quarterback, which if De'Eric King comes in, you can knock out Brennan. Um, it, it could be somebody else even if a transfer doesn't come in. Yeah, I mean, it's we entirely don't, possible. It's going to be a competition. You got that right. And then Sam Howell, North Carolina quarterback, he is a true sophomore. Uh, he did some pretty outstanding things last year. Uh, I think North Carolina is going to be pretty good next year. Yeah. I don't know that they'll be the Heisman Trophy good, but we'll see. Uh, after that... Uh, with the fifth best odds, you've got Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson, both from LSU, at, like their wide receivers. Uh, Jefferson, probably going to go pro. Yeah, we think he's going to go pro. I think he's going to go pro. So we we might just be able to knock him off this list. But Jamar Chase is a sophomore, so he will be back yeah, he's there. for his junior season. Kenny Gainwell, Memphis running back, mm -hmm. who was outstanding this year. Um, Memphis, of course, will not have Norvell, so that could hurt him. But... You know, all these guys are 20 to 1. Uh, after that, at 22 to 1, you've got Derek Stingley, who is LSU's cornerback. But starting next year, he is going to be, uh, he'll be playing some wide receiver. So you're looking at a Charles Woodson kind of thing. Yep. And Stingley is a baller. He's a He's freak unreal. athlete. Yeah. So I could, I could so, totally see that. So I believe, and, and I'm going to stop this here before we just read all these names off. I think the game of college football has changed to a point where it's so offensive that it's always going to be a quarterback. Yeah. I, I don't know that a running back or a receiver can possibly have a year. They can have a year to get invited. That's fine. They will never win. Not not again. I think the last running back that you were going to see win was Derrick Henry. And, yeah. And, that and it's was, just because that was when the game changed. Yeah. That was, and the game has just changed. That was that was right when everything switched over, and I mean Derek Derrick Henry was another. Level. Yeah, and, but and, but it doesn't matter if you had Derrick even, Henry today, it's still going to go to some quarterback that has fifty something passing touchdowns. Yeah, and in five thousand yards, like it's just what's so, going to happen. So long as they are in the playoff conversation, but that that year for the playoffs was Alabama, Clemson, Michigan State, and who in the world did oh Oklahoma. Um, but it, nobody had anything crazy as far as stats went that year. Yeah. Like, even Deshaun Watson had 30 passing touchdowns or whatever. Like, the, the game is 
much more up tempo, right. much more based on on big plays and whatnot. Uh, it's tough for a running back that averages five and a half, six right. yards a carry. Even receivers, though, yeah, even Stingley being all over the field, yeah. No, you're right. You know he's going to play DB. He's gonna he's gonna return punts and kicks, and he's still gonna play offense. Seventh best odds. You got a lot of guys here. Um, these are all thirty three to one. Let's name off some highlights. Bo Nix, Auburn quarterback, Brock Purdy, Iowa State quarterback, uh, Chaterius Atwell, what, Louisville wide receiver. No, like that, that ain't happening. Uh, Ian Book, Notre Dame quarterback. Now, if they run through that gauntlet of a schedule that they've got, yeah, yeah I could see that. Um, JV and Hawkins, Louisville running back. Uh, Jalen Waddell, Alabama wide receiver. Now, Waddell, you could see it because he returns kicks and that, and I mean, he had touchdowns returning kicks in some of the biggest spots yeah. against Auburn, against LSU, you know, all that. So, get invited. Yep. I don't see him winning it. I, I agree with you. I mean, if, if anybody were, like, if, if he had a really big year, then Mac Jones would get invited. That's right. It's going to yep. go to Jones. Uh, Rondell Moore from Purdue. Uh, he spent most of this year injured. Uh, Trey Sanders, Alabama running back, who hasn't even played a down, but we think Najee Harris is coming back. So Sanders is going to be split in time. So uh, Zamir White, Georgia running back with, um, oh, Lord, Swift being gone. Uh, he's going to get the, the duration of the carries. Um, after that, at 50 to 1, you've got Dylan Gabriel, UFC quarterback. You got Jarrett Patterson, Buffalo running back, uh, Journey Brown, Penn State running back, Michael Penix Jr., Indiana quarterback, Panay Sewell from Oregon, who is an offensive lineman, uh, Sean Clifford, Penn State quarterback, Spencer Sanders, the Oklahoma State quarterback, which I think he should probably be higher. Probably. Uh, and then Tylen Wallace, Oklahoma State wide receiver. Uh, if anybody was going to have a shot at it from from this 50-1 to one group, I, I think it's going to be Spencer Sanders. Yes. Uh, Tylen in, Wallace, if Wallace has good numbers, they're going to attribute it to Sanders. That's right. In in Gundy's system, yeah, you absolutely have a shot. Uh, in the 33-1, to one, the one that I think has uh, a chance there is probably Ian Book. That's my guy. Uh, I don't think Bo Nix has a shot. I don't think Brock Purdy has a shot. And then all the other guys are wide receivers and running backs. And he's going to have a chance to show out because he's going to have Wisconsin and Green Bay. It's going to be a massive game. And he gets Clemson at Notre Dame. Yeah. And you show up in those two games, and then the rest of the schedule, you're going to have a chance. Yeah. Now, you're right. You're 100% right. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week. Obviously, we will be talking more college football through the rest of the off offseason. Uh, we'll talk about futures bets. We'll talk about things that are happening in the sport. So, make sure and stay in with us. Make sure you hit subscribe on the podcast. Hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Leave some comments. Tell us what you think about these. Who has a good shot at the Heisman Trophy? Who's somebody that's not even on this list that we need to pay attention to? Uh, Derek King being on or being not being on here, uh, partly because we don't know where he's going to play next year. But once that happens, then we'll figure it out. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. You can find all of our stuff over there. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi is the South's premier sports gambling destination. And we will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.